Hi, I'm Louise. I've always used microscopes but never known how to do it properly, so I'm interested in learning about how they work and what different bits there are to it. Uh, I'm Louis Walno. Uh, I'm a retired head teacher, and in recent years I've devoted a lot of time to developing and teaching courses about microscopy to a whole range of different people but particularly members of the beekeeping fraternity. Hello, I'm Chris Thomas. I used to work for a research company and was responsible for the microscopes there. And now I run my own company. So in this video, we're going to talk about the lenses on the microscope. So what are the key lenses, Lewis? Can you explain, please? Yes, we have the condenser lens system, mm -hmm. But the main image forming lenses are the objective, the set of objective lenses mm -hmm. and the eyepiece lens or lenses. Mm -hmm. The objectives usually come in sets. Right. Okay. And there are different magnifications in the range. Do you want to know what they are? Yes. I, I know you said 10 and 40. That's right. Other. Usually the lowest one is somewhere in the range of four or five. Yeah. Then we move on to the 10 and then up to the times 40. And there's usually a very high powered lens, which magnifies approximately a hundred times. Right, so when I'm looking at something, it's at 10, 40 or hundred times magnification. Not quite. Right. Because you have to take account of the magnification that the eyepiece lens is providing as well. Oh, so they have a magnification. They do. The eyepiece lens, or lenses, look at the image that this lens forms, and they magnify it a bit more, and modify it ready for reception by your eyes. Okay, so what would the total be? Well, to work out the total, you take the objective magnification, right. and you multiply it by the eyepiece magnification. Okay, are all the eyepiece magnifications all the same all the time? Or? Well, no, they're not. Uh, in what we've got, for example, on this eyepiece, can you see the, the number? The number is always, of it magnification 10, is always given. Times 10. So that's a times 10 objective. Um, what's it got on that one? Can you just have a look? Yes, please. That's also times that's 10. That's times 10. But I know that on the, uh, the Reichart, I've got some higher powered eyepieces. And that says 12.5? 12.5. Okay. The other thing we, we, uh, we hadn't mentioned was, and this is fairly obvious, is you can either have one eyepiece linked to the lens system, or as we were demonstrating in other videos, you can have a binocular system where you're using both your eyes mm -hmm. to actually look at the sample. And on some microscopes, you actually have a trinocular head where the additional uh, head that you've got there, apart from the eyepieces, is for the camera. So they can um, attach a camera to, to, right. to do photography uh, on, uh, on that. Okay. But coming back to the, um, to the objectives and the eyepieces, um, what are the key lenses out of those two, really? Which are the more important in terms of the, the optics and the magnification? Well, the objective lens is really the more important of the two in, in the sense that it actually extracts the detail that you want to see in your object and it magnifies it to a certain extent and creates what's called the primary image which would be situated somewhere just below the eyepiece in the tube. Right. As I said earlier, the eyepiece then looks at that and modifies it ready for reception by your eyes. So the, the, the quality or the resolution of the image that you can get is really determined primarily by the objective. Yes, the that's true. So, and are all objectives the same or do we have different qualities? No. In fact, the standard objectives are really satisfactory for most purposes. And they are called achromatic lenses. What, what does that actually mean? Well, achromatic it essentially means without colour. A okay. chromatic. 
But why, why, why is that important in, in lens formation? I think we need to explain that. Why, yes. why should we be worried about an achromatic lens? Well, if you take a, a simple lens, a simple biconvex lens, you can use it... Like a magnifying glass. Like a magnifying glass. Yeah. You can use it to magnify and extract a bit of detail from an object, but there will be certain distortions that are built in and certain unwanted colour effects. Now the amount of correction that your lens system has will depend largely upon how much you're prepared to pay for it. Mm -hmm. The standard acromats do a pretty good job, but if you're prepared to spend a lot more money, you can move through the range to so-called apochromats, and there the correction level is very, very high indeed. There's some, sorry, go on. Does that have colour in it? The, the it's to, yes, it's to do it's to do with the amount of colour right. correction, correction that, that yeah. you have. And it's near perfect, in, not quite, but it's near perfect in apochromats. Okay. The, the easiest way to tell when you're looking through um, a microscope is to see whether you're getting a red or a bluish fringing on the outside of the light disc that you see. And that's normally an indication that you've you've either got something that isn't colour corrected or it's just got a basic colour correction. Yes. Um, when you then get to good quality achromats or the um, apochromats, uh, then that will all disappear and it will be you know, a perfect colour reproduction. Oh. The, the other one that's important for me from a photography point of view, um, you noticed it when you were looking through the microscope and things weren't all, all in focus yeah. all the way through. Yeah. Um, there is another type of uh, objective that you can use uh, that actually gives you quite a flat image. And yes, is, a plan. It's called a plan objective, yes. Yeah. Gives you a flat field image. So you can see most of it in focus instead of only part yeah. of it. Yes. Yeah. What happens is that often you uh, you might only have the centre in focus with a with a conventional achromatic lens, uh, or the edge in focus as you're focusing up and down. But with a, a plan lens, then everything that is in that field of focus will be uh, in focus. Right. So. It's worth mentioning that with an achromatic objective you can use almost any sort of eyepiece and it will work pretty well. But if you're going to use apochromatic objectives, mm. you do need special so-called compensating eyepieces to get them to work correctly. Oh, right. So in fact, often the objectives and the eyepieces come in matching pairs mm. so that they, they are calibrated and work best with each other. Oh, right. So ideally, you know, use the objectives and the eyepieces that come with the particular microscope. Um, the, the lens system that is always underrated uh, is the condenser, isn't it? Now, why is that important for, for us from an optical point of view in microscopy? Well, it's like a chain. The weakest link in the chain is what determines the ultimate quality that you're going to get. Um, you can get away, particularly at, with low-power objectives, with a fairly basic condenser arrangement. But really, if you're looking for optimum effects, you need a more highly corrected condenser. And what does the condenser lens actually do in terms of the microscope well, view? Well, the condenser lens actually creates an image of your patch of light that you're looking at, that's emerging from your lamp or from the base yeah. of your microscope. And it creates an image of that Onto, oh, on the, okay. it superimposes it effectively on the specimen that you're looking right. at. Okay. So you okay. should get a really nice even illumination uh, right across the field of view. Mm. The other aspect that's important with the condenser is the, the angle at which the light enters the objective. So for example, if you're looking at um, this objective here, the three times objective, when it's in focus, the angle of light that comes in is actually quite narrow. Mm -hmm. And that has something to do with how much detail can be resolved. If you then use a 10 times objective, you'll see it's a lot closer. And what yeah. will happen is that the, the cone of light is increased. And this increases the resolving power. And as you go up through the objectives, if we go through to the 40, and there you find that you're a lot closer. So you've got quite a steep cone of light. Oh, okay. Um, this is often 
the term that we utilize in microscopy is numerical aperture. So it's the measure of that cone of light. And if you look at any of the objectives, they will have a number which gives um, their, mag their magnification, and it will also give... Oh, NA13. NA, that's right. So that is actually 0.13. Oh. That's 0.13. Uh, but on the, uh, the times 10 here, that's a point. Two eight. Yeah. And on this 40... It's 0.70. It's 0.7. The scale yeah. runs from about 0 to 1.3. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, which uh, gets us into the situation where we've talked about um, typically from 10 to 40 magnification. It's, it's very easy to work within those ranges. Um, when you're looking at higher magnifications, what was the one you mentioned about 100 times? Was mm -hmm. it on, on this one? Yes, I think there's yes, a times 100, 100 on it. On it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now that's actually got a numerical aperture. Can you read that figure? I can't see it from here. 1.25. 1.25. But it also says OEL on there. Oh right, <laughs> which is German for Öl. The other way it might be described is OI, isn't it? For oil immersion. Oil immersion. And the problem is in, in, um, in air, the maximum cone that we can have is reflected by a numerical aperture of 1. Right. Okay. But that has got a numerical aperture greater than 1. But if you have a numerical aperture greater than 1 in air, you don't get lens entering light entering the lens anymore. It bounces off. It comes in at too, st too steep an angle. So it hits the lens and bounces off rather than going up into the microscope. Um, so we could actually do something for that. And perhaps you can tell us a bit what, what you do with oil immersion and what What's important then about that particular objective? Well, the idea is to put a drop of oil between the front element of the objective lens and the cover slip so that the uh, optical path through from the specimen right through the lens has the same sort of medium to travel through, the same optical a medium with a the same optical density all the way through. The same, effectively, the same characteristics for, for that yeah, numerical yeah. aperture. And then instead of the light the bouncing off and mm -hmm. not getting, bouncing off through the cover slip and not getting up to the lens, you capture more light that way mm. and you can right. stand a better chance of filling the front element of yeah. your lens with light. Yeah. And ironically, if you're using a, an, an objective, with a numerical aperture of 1.25, which has got the oil bridge between the objective and the sample, um, you need to have a corresponding condenser that also provides the light at that intensity. Now, um, I don't know whether we can see the, the writing on the condenser, but there is often a little label there giving you the numerical aperture of the condenser. And if uh, an air one, like on that machine, um, is 0.95, so that's not strong enough to actually utilise it. But on this Meopla and on this old Watson, it's 1.3. But it will actually require an oil bridge between the condenser and the sample. So you've got your slide, you've got your condenser, an oil drop touching the condenser and the slide underneath. And then on the top, you've got an oil drop touching the top of the sample and touching the lens system to get the maximum light going through. So you have to do that yourself? You would have to do that yourself, yes. and that's a, that's another uh, another exercise in another video. Um, but most microscopes work in the range of four times objective through to forty times objective in air very well. Okay. Is there anything then, else we've left out? I would just mention that one of the very useful objective lenses that's often missed out of the set is the times twenty. Uh huh. They are obtainable and uh, they're extremely useful for many purposes. Yeah, it's a big jump, isn't it, going from 10 times magnification to 40 to times 40. magnification, yeah. and it's a good bridge, uh, yeah. bridge objective. Good. Well, I hope you've learnt a bit more about I have. high pieces <laughs> of objectives there. Right, take 257. If you want to learn more about microscopy, all you need to do is ask these two, and they'll tell you everything. Uh, we're not just the founts of all knowledge. We rely on other people as well. And we're a member of several societies and clubs. So, for example, there's the Quicket Microscopical Club. Yes, there's the Postal Microscopy Society and 
the Royal Microscopical Society. And if you look online, you'll also find various sites such as Mixcape, which are great for people who are interested in microscopy. And of course, look on YouTube and find our videos. Thank you. Bye.